what up YouTube, Gilly Writes Comics and stuff here, want to talk a little Reddit with you, so being new to the CG movement, comics gate, as a creator, I'm not acknowledged by any of the, I guess the, the CG figureheads, I'm still a newbie, um, trying to pave a way, I guess, trying to form an audience, trying to just create my own little thing. Um, so I'm also trying to promote my book. That's kind of tough. <laughs> There's so many great comic books out there, man. Like, it's just hard to stand out. That's just the truth. Um, and I, I know, I know people that will shell out tons of money on comics. I mean, my, you know, my buddies included in that. And I'll see their, their, you know, stuff they're reading or whatnot, and it's like a big pile of shame. It's like all these books and, like, nothing, like, you ain't even reading them. So it's just like, uh, like, Marvel, DC, the big two, like, they have their, their fans, their legion of fans, and these people will buy books and will continue to buy books, but I'm not saying everybody, but there's a, a large group that will buy them and, and don't really read them as well. So, like I'm saying, like it's just hard for someone like me that's new to just be like, hey, check out this book. It's like, who are you? We don't know who you are. You're not getting my money. You're not reputable. And, okay, I can't argue that. You you know, there's your money for sure. I'm trying to put a product out there as a nobody, but I try to, you know, create something that I feel it has mainstream appeal and then me as a writer i'm growing myself i'm not i'm not the greatest writer in the world but i know what i'm bringing to the table is could definitely hang somewhat you know and as the more books i put out the stronger i'll, I'll get in in my craft so you know also have buddies who support video games me I'm a big gamer, and much of my writing influence also stems from video games. A lot of people are like, oh, what books you read? Yeah, for sure, I, I'd read, but also a lot of my influence comes from, from video game narratives. And a lot of that structures into how I write, I guess, because I've had people read my stuff, and they're like, well, that's kind of like how like a video game introduces or something like that, or how with Under the Flesh particularly, like how I introduce the characters. It's like, oh, that's almost how like a video game introduces each character. So I've had that before. So I guess just innately, it just it ekes out on a page, I guess. But that's just a little about that. Um, so I'm trying to promote my book. So I figured Reddit, just comic books, is as on the nose as it as it can be. I I just put an image and I just put cover of my book Lair live on Indiegogo right now. That's it. You know, uh, that's it. I figured that. I mean, like I said, I'm trying to put a product that I feel if it's if it's compared to a, a comic book that's that's from a published, you know, uh, a mainstream publisher, I feel like my stuff could hang just on that shelf equally and and and, and people will want to grab it and at least look through it. Um again, this ain't a, a, an indicator of if anyone will pick up your book, but you know, Reddit comic books, I have 315 upvotes, the most of anything I ever posted on Reddit. So I'll, that's me patting myself on the back right now because that's just cool. Um, and I generated 50 comments, so I thought that's cool. I got people talking about something. And here it's here's the views. I can't even believe if this is correct. This thing garnered 5,000 and 300 views, 5.3k views. Man, that's pretty good. If 5,000 some people just just stop to look at it. You know, even if you scroll through like, you know, sometimes I scroll through Reddit, sometimes you got to click on something to actually see the picture. You know, like like that's a that's 5,000 people clicked on this. For me, that shows this is marketability right here. I mean, that shows like, hey, this click means someone wanted to look at it more. If this was on the shelf, that click to me means Someone's going to pick up that book, leaf through the pages, and maybe put it back or purchase it. Now, did this generate into a big spike for my campaign? No. I would have loved that. Um, but I, I did get some interesting comments. Um, so hopefully I do get some, uh, some backers out of this eventually. But here's some of the comments I got. I mean, let's look back at the cover. It's amazing. I love it. Sebastian Novice is 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 a, is a, a juggernaut, as I always say on, on the lines. And we came we, we we came up with a great concept for the cover, and it worked. Um, 
So I got some cool comments. Well, now, wow, now that is how to drive business and entice curiosity. Great artwork, um, you know. And I respond, you know, thank you. Just trying to show comic book fans the book exists and it looks good in physical form in case they may want a copy, you know. Someone's like, hey, do you have a link to it? Yes, indeed. Boom, posting the link, right? Will the physical book be bound like standard single issue or something more like a trade a la Action Comics? Physical book actually has a soft bound cover and hard spine like a trade paperback. It looks beautiful. Um, I'm not, I, I, of course, I, like I, I'm a little biased, but I'm saying like that book, when you hold it in your hand, it looks solid. Like it, it looks solid. Um, sweet. That's how I prefer to collect. Right on, man. I'm the same way. Stop collecting floppies and just waited for the trades. Laugh out loud that we just become best friends. You know, so this is just a cool little uh, uh, moment here with someone there. Um, someone says, why? Okay, Google calls me Dragon. Dude, sweet looking, bro. Sweet looking book, bro. Okay, great. Then you also get the not so great comments, but that's bound to happen when you put yourself out there on a platter. You're going to get some people to poke a fork at you. You know what I mean? So, well, that convinced me to have another look at it and remember why I'm not going to back it. $30 to ship. Oh, this ain't a bad one. $30 to ship to the UK. Best of luck with it, though. Looks nice. And for those wanting a link, okay, boom. So that was nice of him. He even put my, okay, cool. So, no, this wasn't one of the bad ones. Okay. I put, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, UK shipping is not easy. Last book I crowdfunded, I miscalculated international shipping and had to shell out over $250 out of pocket to make sure my UK backers got their books. For this campaign, I'm going to add a little something extra for UK backers, like a sketch or pinup. So, I'm adding that to all my, um, to all the international uh, orders that or, or backers. I'm going to put a little something extra. Um, you're getting something extra, just a little sketch, pen up something I'm going to do for you guys. Cause it is a lot. Um, and it's just what it is. I'm sorry. Um, for this. Okay. You have my attention. Yeah. I've been stung a few times. Just do what makes it possible to get the books out to backers. Yep. For sure. For this campaign, I'm going to add a little something. Any love for Aussie backers? Hell yeah. Of course. Definitely included in all international orders. To be honest, and this is true. In all my crowdfunding, some of my most generous backers were Aussie, and that's no fluff talk. So I had two backers when I did my Under the Flesh uh, book campaign. It was a Kickstarter before. I had this dude, Revic, who literally is a character in my book because one of the, the awards I put was a, a character in the book. Um, and he's amazing. He's Australian. He's an awesome dude. And another one of my most generous backers is Martin Gregory. Another good, great, great dude, uh, Mr. Gregory. He's he's excellent. A great, great advice as well with my campaigns. Like, like these are people that you know that, that you're doing your thing, you're creating, but they genuinely wanted to help you. So that's awesome. It, you know what I mean? Like, I love that. I mean, these are people I wish I could see in real life and give them a hug because they're awesome. I just want to spend time with them and be around them. They're great. So, okay, who did the cover? Same artist. I'm like, yeah, the cover and interior work are both done by the same artist. Nice. Looks like you got a bad. It looks like you got a badass book on your hands. Thank you, brother. Trying very hard to put on an indie comic out there that can stand out amongst the already awesome books coming out monthly. Because, like I said, there's great stuff coming out. Um, and you know, I'm just trying to uh, show that I, I'm I'm someone that can be part of that group. Um, Damn, the art looks incredible. Thank you, bro. Was very fortunate enough to find an amazing artist that I gel with to finish this book. Wow, incredible artwork. Great way to introduce a book. Hey, thanks. Yeah, we had different ideas, but settled on that one. Um, what else we got? Link. Okay, here you go. All right. Um, then someone asking advice. How'd you get? How'd you go about getting your book up and going? I'm currently writing something and dream of a day when I can publish something. So I'm like, hey, it's brutally hard work, but so rewarding when it pays off. Crowdfunding is your best bet. Crowdfunding wasn't around back in the day. It's around now. It gives guys like me that are nobodies a chance to at least see a finished product. Although it's hard and you got to market yourself. It's just, it's brutal and it takes a lot of time, but you got to do what you got to do. Once you have your script polished and ready to go in the art phase, set aside some money to finance at least a cover and a few pages to pitch after setting aside your goal. Unless you have an indisposable income, you'll be set without the crowdfunding stress. So of course, if I was sitting on a nice bank account, in my honest honest true heart of hearts being as real as possible as transparent if i was sitting on a nice six-figure bank account i would in no way crowdfund at all that's just being straight up it, it is a great way to get some money especially if you have some cachet if you have uh, some notoriety it, it can help push a book if i had that kind of money i would put my book out there and do everything on my own 
if I and sell it, of course, if I get little profits by selling it, yeah, that'd be cool. But my genuine, my wholehearted uh, approach is totally and 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 just seriously just for me to put out a book and enjoy sharing a story with other people. Getting money off it would be uh, a bonus. So if I were sitting on six figures, uh, an income like that, and disposable income, I crowdfund without the stress. Picasso looks fantastic. Thank you, man. I'm blessed to work with some great talents. My first book, UTF, had a hell of a guy doing the art. He's now doing Marvel work. You know, so I did UTF, and the artist on that is one of my one of my uh, uh, good colleagues, and he's he moved on to Marvel, and he's doing great stuff. So I miss him, of course. Hopefully, I could work with him again. But I'm in no way that type of person that you know spite or anything. So I think a previous reader pointed out this had links to the comics gate people so again the negativity with comics gate so i'm like from what i understood about comics gate after doing my research is that it's a movement by comic book creators and supporters that are fed up with the forced diversity and schlock propaganda that are pervading much of marvel's books mainly i was intrigued by it after hearing it was a hate group and was sent to find out that the claim is not even remotely close to having a hairline of truth some pretty amazing comics out there and then the reply, forced diversity. Oh, you mean the promotion of tolerance of and respect for minorities? Well, we all need to kick that. We all, we all need to kick back at that, don't we? And this is me responding. No, I'm a minority writer. Marvel ought to do better than shoehorn ethnicities on already established iconic heroes. I'd rather see them create a new breed of superheroes that represent the world around us. Or foster an organic attempt at developing minority writing talent since we need to tolerate and respect them and offer more attempts for inclusion. But that's far too original, I guess, for Marvel. Mar that, that is my point. That's just saying, you know, like, I got nothing against diversity. I'm a minority myself. I'm underrepresented. Like I said, comic books is like Hollywood. The industry, it's hard to get in there, man. I'm a nobody. You know, I'm a New Yorkian from New York. You know, who the hell are you? I don't know you. You write? Who the hell are you? Like, it's hard for me to come in with. It's just hard. Especially as a writer, I can't draw. If I knew how to draw, like Todd McFarlane, I do my own brand. I do my own thing. I draw my own stuff. I gotta pay other people, and I'm I'm not a I'm not a rich dude, so it's hard. So I I I survive on crowdfunding. That's the only way I thrive. Any book I try to pitch, if it doesn't get picked up by crowdfunding, I put it aside, and I gotta go something else. Try another book until it's it's hard, man. It's not it's not for the faint of heart. Um, so for this is just me, I'm like, what was it in particular, right? Okay, so here, this is what he, this is what they say after my response. They say, what you said here seems reasonable. Okay, cool. I'll do my own research into Comics Gate and see what their agenda and ideology is. I seem to be getting conflicting reports and would like to weigh the evidence up. Can you pass on some of the sources that you looked at? And in the same paragraph, not like a different, not like he responded a couple of minutes later after this one. It's all together. He's like, okay, I've done further research and I've seen enough to know that Comics Gate lot have nothing in common with me and my values and ethics. F them. Okay, that's your opinion, man. No problems. You know, if that's what you feel, okay, great. When I made my decision to support Comics Gate, I didn't do it on, 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 on a snap judgment. You know, I took my time, I waited in, I was doing a live Kickstarter campaign, and I was talking to people, and they're like, hey, Comics Gate don't support Kickstarter, so I'm like, okay, being that I respect the movement, you know, I canceled my Kickstarter at the time, while it was still good, had a whole week left, and was very possible to fund, but I, I, I felt something there with Comics Gate that was doing something different. Again, I don't have any connections to, the, to you know anyone in the hierarchy, so to speak, if we want to even call it that. But I know it's the movement still it's in, in its infancy. And I saw it as a genuine attempt to push my book as a good, top-quality book. Not any mishmash trash that I'm trying to put in. Oh, I'm Comics Gate. Hey, guys, I'm Comics Gate, too. Uh, here's my book. I'm good. I'll put, I could put a hard-earned book that already crowdfunded for 10 k on another site. I'm putting that on the table. That's my credibility right there. You don't want to put me up. You don't want to put me hey. That's fine, but I'm just trying to say this is what I bring to the table. You know, I got some, I got some, some credibility on my side too. Um, but again, it's 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 a, it's a small little pond, and those that are already established, even at CG, probably see me as like, man, there's another dude. We kind of want to keep him away. We got a little, we got a little click. I might be just, you know, ad libbing a bit, but I'll, this is just, you know, where I'm at right now. So again, this dude, you know. Um, oh, this is me responding. So what was it in particular? I'm curious. Like, what was it? What What did you see that you were like, oh, F them, or they, their values don't align with me? Just what is it? I'm curious, man. 
I like to get information. I don't I don't I do thinking for myself and I try to piece things together and think. I don't just, you know, do the hasty quick calls. I, I'm I try to, you know, elaborate on certain things. I try to ponder. I try to figure, you know, uh, cross and T's and not, and, and dot in the I's and X's to O's. That's me. So anyway, um, so I'm like, okay, for me, I always understood comics to be a good platform for political messages sprinkled throughout a narrative. But when things become overly lopsided to point of propaganda and it waters down to st storytelling, that's where I'm out. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, Lair has a controversial, controversial, I guess, dialogue uh, bubble, if you want to call it. You know, like, well, that's what it is. But it, I mean, it is a bit controversial. Um, people can take it for what they want. But me as a writer, I got to stay true to my characters. And if my character is thinking one way and he says a little something, he's going to say it. Now, is my whole book going to you know, revolve around that microcosm? No. Because, again, I'm telling a story. I have another message. I'm trying to, I try to be organic as possible because I'm also a reader. I'm also a fan. I also enjoy um, digesting you know, mediums. I want to see what, what different type of stuff is out there. So I've seen stuff that's just like, okay, I get it. Okay, whoa. Like, you, like I get it, but y'all, you're doing it too much. Like, you're hitting the hammer so much where it's like my nose is bleeding. I'm, it's like I can't even breathe. Like, I get it. You know, sprinkle it here and there organically within a message is great. When you keep on knocking it, you know, you keep on whacking that mole, it's like, come on, man. Like, I, bruh. So that's just where, where I'm at as far as politics and comics. Um, so he's like, yeah, your, your affectation of being reasonable and non-judgmental isn't going to wash. I'm done with you. Okay, buddy. No harm, no foul. You even got a negative point. I didn't even downvote you, man. I did not. Look at this. I did not downvote this man, right? Cause I'm respectful of other people's opinion. I didn't even downvote him. I could do this and put a negative two on him. I didn't downvote the brother. I just, that's, I don't do that. I'm just... I, I'm my, I, I don't hit people watered down. But anyway, he got downvoted. Some other people didn't like what he had to say. Whatever. I'm like, God bless, bro. Was good talking with you anyway. Whenever you really want to get to the meat of an issue, I'll be here. I'm all for discourse. I'm the discourse guy. I'll talk to anybody. Hey, if you if there's something you don't agree with, I'll say why I don't agree with. I'm all for talking, man. We all got to be on the same planet. I'm all for talking. I don't mind talking. I'm on my sharing. But let's talk. If I don't, if I don't like Rice Krispies... And you prefer Apple Jacks, you're going to just not talk to me anymore? I mean, really? Come on, man. What kind of world are we living in? Someone says, the cover reminds me of Fable 2 cover. Yes, it's a great cover. I love that cover. It's it's oof, beautiful cover. Um, so Google Fable 2. Um, I think I could pull it up here real quick just if you guys really want to see the cover because it's an amazing cover. And I even love that game. Um, he said it reminded him of the Fable 2 cover. Yeah, let's just take a look here. Boom. It was a beautiful cover. Let me get a closer view on this. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, man. The cover is insane. You know what? When, when, when Sebastian and I did the cover, like, with Fable 2 wasn't even an inspiration. Like, I'm serious. And I had played the game. It's just, it, I mean, I don't know if he saw it and so, but like, just, it happens. But yeah, Fable 2 is a, is a great, great, uh, I can see the, the parallel right there. Yeah. Um, love Fable. Yes, cover was awesome sauce. Not sure if artistry inspiration from that, but as a writer, much of my influence also stemmed from gaming. Yeah, sorry, I, I told that to you guys. I was sold on the artwork alone, but that Kirby Crackle feels like it's pandering to me specifically. Kirby Crackle, like, I don't know what the heck he was talking about. I don't know if, I literally don't know if it's one of the pages in Lair where it's like this purple pink crackle of a dimension opening up and it's purple like Kirby. I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe, you know. From Kirby the artist, I mean Jack Kirby, I, I have no clue, man. I just put laugh out loud. I've seen this on here before, aren't you comic skater? Then someone says, he is unfortunately, the works look solid, can't support someone with comic skate. Great. I'm like, where's the proof that comic skate isn't positive? Because he says that as something, you know, pink. So I'm trying to paint it as comic gate is all positive. You know, he's just trying to say, I'm trying to say, well, how is it not positive? He said, holy positive, you only frame the good without the bad. There's plenty of proof of the negatives of Comicsgate. If you support the ideas you claim, but separate from the movement, that would be acceptable. But instead, you associate with a hate group because you agree with them. So I don't hate anybody, but I get what he's trying to say. Why are they be calling a hate group? Why are they hating? I see Comicsgate as how image first formulated against the big two. I speak for myself, of course, but I don't hate anybody. I don't judge, persecute me all you want, but I won't persecute you. As a comics fan, I felt a major disconnect with Marvel books lately, but absolutely adore the films. 
you know, most of them. There's some that I don't enjoy. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I'm sorry. I wasn't crazy about it. It was okay, but I just felt it wasn't my... It could have been done way better. Um, I liked. I enjoyed part one, although I borrowed heavily on Avengers formula as far as uh, the villain and everything and just that structure. But it was entertaining. I, I liked it a lot. Um, is there another one that wasn't too crazy about... I mean, for the most part, Avengers of Ultron, I'm sorry, there's another one that I felt it could have been way better. Um, but for the most part, I, 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 I love the movies. Um, so I'm like, it's about, you know, creating comics without propaganda and respecting the consumers who support you. And again, when I say comics without propaganda, that's not to say that none of the comics gate books have any probably a, a political message here or there or maybe like, you know, a bit of dialogue or... But like I said, the whole thing ain't like, you know, it's like if you're cooking and, you, you know, you sprinkle this, sprinkle that, you know, but we're not like overdosing on the salt so much where all you taste is salt the moment, you you know, you sip the spoon. You know what I mean? Um, and then he says, I'm not singling you out, but when the most visible members of the group and representatives of the movement are clearly bigoted to not see it as anything but a way to lash out angrily at their own boogeyman takes will for ignorance. Comics hate comics are simple, simply another form of propaganda from a group the difference is the message being sent doesn't seem worth supporting. Okay, that's his opinion. That's all right. You don't want to support. Okay, great. I don't think all comic skaters are heinous individuals, but I see it as a definite moral mistake to associate with them. Okay, I'm taking a risk by associating with them, no doubt. Um, I'm glad you don't see them all as heinous because, you know, we don't see all people who don't support comic skate as heinous. At the end of the day, comics, we, if you enjoy a comic book, my hope is you want to see the industry flourish. You know, that's my hope. To see the industry flourish, to see more great books being made, but you know, to give everyone a fair shake at making books as well. Try to find, uh, you know, because how do you break into comics? There's no way to break into comics. There's no way. It's you know, you do your comic. If you you get connections, you, you put it, put a book out there. Some people are more fortunate than others. Some people, you know, you know, have connections. Their, their book gets, you know. Um, pushed b before another potentially great book. It's it's hot. You know, it, it's it, it's 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 a hot. It's a hot climate. It's hot. It's hot to get noticed. Um, and then he's like, uh, what else? I don't think, okay, though I'm beginning to think a lot of the association is simply to gain access to their generous wallets, to be honest. See, yeah, a lot of the comics get books, some of the beginning ones, Jawbreakers, Cyber Frog, Iron Sights, a lot of these books um, push the envelope. You know, they, they hit six figures. That's become a thing, six figures. Um, will there ever be six figures? No. Um... Would it be possible to eventually maybe do a book that could be six figures? Yeah, sure. Did I leech on to Comics Gate to get a lot of money for my campaign? No. I I, I genuinely saw the movement out. I, I try to be you know respectful of, of the position. I try to you know tweet out some people that were in the movement. I I got organic feedback from them, and I'm I'm trying to do it in a way where. You know, am I trying to, you know, I wouldn't be lying if I'm not trying to get on uh, EVS's show, Ethan Van Skyver. I, I mean, I would love to be on a show. And I feel me as a person, um, as an identity for someone that creates comics, I feel that I'm unique. I feel that I'm definitely, you know, one of the kind. We all are, I hope. Um, but I, I, I bring something unique to the table. Um, and if you look at my book and you see the quality behind it and you see a Christian writing horror these are things that, okay, this makes for an interesting storyteller. So that's just where I'm at. So I definitely feel I have uh, something unique to the table. Um, I crowdfunded over $17,000 uh, for my projects through Kickstarter, uh, through with Under the Flesh and Lair. So I, I'm not in quite six figures, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm healthily in five figures. <laughs> um, so I'd definitely love to see Lair get to that point. But again, my intention wasn't to get on just to take advantage and see if I can make some money. My thing was, hey, I see a legitimate movement here where maybe I can be appreciated as a creator and accepted and, and, and respected and valued. And maybe I can have a platform to promote my work and it can be open and made available to a lot of people who wouldn't knew I existed otherwise. So that's where I'm at with the whole, you know, comic fake thing. So then this is me saying my, my response. I hear you. I've seen such of the, much of the vitriol on both sides. I'm still not an acknowledged member in any right, just a peon. I'm a peon. I super chatted uh, Ethan Van Skyver a couple of times. He did say, hey, Gilly, send me the book. Hey, we want to get you on the show, see what you're made of. Again, I, I, I tried. In inboxing him is the book. 
that probably lost in the sea of direct messages. Um, I tried connect, hitting up some people that were connected closely to him to say, hey, he did say this. I'm not lying. How could I get him my book? Just to, so he can look at it and see, hey, this is pro. And maybe put me on. Um, John Malin did a critique of my uh, Indiegogo. He liked uh, the artwork. He thought it was solid. Antonio Bryce, uh, who's close with Ethan as well, he said, be patient. But he put me on his show, and we had a great uh, talk. And he just he saw the potential. He said, hey, I'm not going to lie. I have people contact me about their books, but yours like yours was, was solid, dude. He's like, yours blew me away. So that's why you're here on the show. And I appreciate that opportunity. So my whole thing is, you know, I just want to keep on going to the next show, to the next show, till I can make it to Johnny Carson's show and, you know, just talk a little bit with Ethan and just say, hey, this is what I'm about. This is what I do. Maybe you could squeeze me in as part of the click. If not, hey, no worries. I'm still going to be doing my thing. Um, so again, I'm like, I haven't personally spoke with any of the most notable figureheads of the movement and it's definitely not for a lack of trying. Obscurity plagues many unknown comic book creators, especially in an industry that mirrors Hollywood's way of form. I saw CG as a way of connecting with a legitimate cause for the betterment of comics, and many of the fellow CG creators I've associated with happen to be really great people. But again, they're also green like me. A lot of the guys I talk with, they're noobs like me as far as jumping into comics gate. You know, very small followings, modest followings, but they probably see what I see, and you know, that's why they're jumping on. Um, and okay, so and I haven't had the pleasure to be featured prominently as a CG creator to have my campaign receive a bump in cash flow, which is why I decided to try sharing on Reddit. So as far as marketability is concerned, I feel that Lair is definitely marketable. The interior pages are nice. Uh, my writing is to the point where you're going to get something you haven't gotten before, uh, especially with a Christian who does horror. I do dark stories, uh, you know, embedded with, with, with spiritual undertones. That's just my style. I just felt like, you know, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to put something that's going to lead people to think more uh, about life after death or just more about life. And you come to your own conclusions, and, and that's it. That's just me. Anyway, guys, I talked enough. This is my little post here. It got over 5.3 thousand views. That's marketable enough, man. That, that shows you... This is solid, man. At least from from a, a visual standpoint, it looks good. People will pick it up. So again, thanks for checking out my stuff. Uh, if you haven't back layer, please consider it. I can definitely, uh, you know, widen the audience. Uh, uh, you know, I'd love to bridge the gap to have more viewers see what layer is all about. Uh, and again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. All right, peace out.